Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. So, first of all, you see me dressed in my cricket gear because today is the fathers and sons game at my son's cricket club. Um, I haven't worn this stuff for about 10 years or played the game, so goodness knows how that's going to go. I'll let you know if you're interested. Um, now, this puzzle is one of the two we put up on our community page about a week ago. And we said at the time, these are both some very tough puzzles that have been drawn to our attention. Um, and, you know, may, we'll do a solve of one of them. We asked you to vote on it. Now, I believe the guys on the Discord server made absolutely sure that the vote was 50-50. And as they hoped, we, Simon's kind of agreed that we will do both, therefore. And I've begged for this one because it's more Sudoku-y. Um, and the other one looks absolutely rock hard to me. So Simon's going to have to do that himself. Now, this puzzle, I mean, I do think it might be a bit counterproductive to um, have made that vote 50 50 because I don't think we'll run another vote now in the future. But anyway, um, this puzzle is called, um, well, it's some sort of snake Sudoku by Quarter Through, who. Um, we know as Jeremy Butler, I think, and uh, he's been featured on the channel a few times, and this is apparently kind of his latest tour de force. Now, what are the rules? Well, first of all, we have a regular Sudoku, so not three by three boxes. There's one to nine in every row, column, and mark shape. Secondly, we have a snake in the grid. Its head and tail are marked. The rules of this snake are that it cannot um, touch its path orthogonally. So it couldn't come down here and then do that because it would be touching itself. So in a way, you can see that in colors, we have to have a clear path for the snake. However, it can touch its path diagonally. So it would be like that. So again, you can still see the snake as it snakes its way around. Um, you can tell which way it's going, but it's not touching itself orthogonally. So that's the rule on the, on the snake shape. Then we have clues outside the grid, which add the number of cells, sorry, it adds the digits in the snake cells in that row or column. So this clearly wouldn't work for the snake I've drawn in the final column because three cells can't add up to 34. And finally, um, what are these other numbers in the grid? Right, well these, assuming that we color the snake one color and the, grids, the other grid cells another color, these cells are showing of their orthogonal neighbors, meaning for this one, these three cells, which, what number are, the, are a different color. So if that one was snake color, that would mean that one of these three cells was not snake, and the other two would also be snake. Um, and every time that is possible to be true, every time that is true, that number is given. So slightly complicated rule set, but makes for a very interesting puzzle apparently. So I'm gonna have a go now. Do try it on the link below the video, but um, let's get cracking. So the, the, we've given the head and tail, and they're quite close together in a corner. That's got to be useful. Yeah, this head, let's call that the head. It cannot escape either through this cell or it would touch this tail far too quickly. I mean, it, that would close the snake and we'd still have all these clues outside that haven't been used. It can't come through this cell for the same reason. Therefore, it's got to come down through this cell. So those are, let's not do gray because that won't give very good contrast. I'll do red for the snake and blue for the other cells. And what that means with the snake coming down here is these two cells are blue. Let's put the tail in red as well. Now we've got two numbers colored blue now. So one means that one of the three surrounding cells here is red, and we can see it's that one, so this is blue. The three means that three of the surrounding cells are red, so we can color that one in. So now the snake has turned. This one becomes blue, therefore. 
It can't come over here or it would close the snake and we've said that's not possible so quickly. So that's red, this is blue and we've got some color, oops, some coloring in already. Now the tail has to come out into that two. Now does that help us? I don't think so. I think twos in the grid when they're not on the perimeter like all the given twos, I think they're a very useless clue. Oh no, well if they're on the snake they're a useless clue because the snake either has to go that way or that way or that way and leave the other two cells blue. So we kind of know that about the twos already if they're on the snake. What is a... I think a one that's not on the perimeter. I don't think that can be a snake cell actually because then wherever the one bit of the snake went the other three surrounding cells couldn't be and that would be a head or tail. So I think we can colour those two ones blue straight away. And they've got one red around them but we don't know where. Three, I think it's got to be the same thing. Three, if it was on the snake that would say that there were three blues around it and again it would be a head or a tail. Have I got this right? Yes, that has to be right. I mean, once you're not at the head or tail, every snake cell has two reds touching it just by virtue of being a snake. I don't think this works on the perimeter, so I'm not going to make any assumptions about that, but I think the three has to be not a snake and has to be surrounded by three reds and a blue. That one too. Oops, sorry, I did not mean to colour all of those cells. There we go. Now that's interesting, this blue three, yeah, that was what got me starting thinking about that. One of these two cells is red, otherwise the snake forks. That's why it can't be two and it can't be none because the snake has to continue. So one of those two is red, so these two must both be red. One of these is blue and one is red. Don't know which one. I'm also... Oh, I was going to say the snake can't come round here because then you couldn't get it to come into these cells where I think it needs to come and get out, but actually it could kind of loop round like that, couldn't it? Yeah, this diagonal touching has to be remembered, so I don't think I can make much more presumption yet around this. Yes, even that's possible. Ooh. Okay, and I'm not going to make any rash predictions there. Now we know it comes around here. What it's going to do. Oh, okay, look at this 41 clue. Yes, okay, that's very nice. The Remember, 41 there is adding all the red cells. So let's subtract it from 45, which is the total of 1 to 9, and we get the sum of the blue cells, which is 4, which is made up of 3 and 1, obviously. So 1 is the only other blue cell in the row. It has to be in one of these two cells because of the placed ones. I don't know which of those is blue, but I do know that every other cell in the row is red. And suddenly we've got snake parts all over the grid, not connected yet. Which might look a bit untidy, but I think it's going to be very helpful. Now, how is this going to connect up? Oh no, hang on, haven't we got a problem? Because one of these is going to be a blue one. Oh yeah, that's not going to say anything about the cells around it because it's not a given. Right, okay. Phew, okay, I thought I'd broken it already. Um, right, there's a 20 at the top. One of these is going to be blue, but one of them's going to be red. Whichever one is red is going to stop the three cells above it. If that was red, those three cells couldn't be red, they'd have to be blue. If that was red, those three cells would have to be blue. But this 20 is going to need at least two more cells. 
So in fact, the snake is either going to arch up at the top there or there. And I don't know which one. But those three are different from those three. Uh, one set is red and one set is blue. I, oh, weird. Um, now, whether this snake goes there or around here, it's got to come down the right-hand side. So that's red. Now, this three... Oh, that's saying that three of the cells around it are red. So they could... No, they can't be those two. They can't be red. Because then these would be red. You'd never get this tail out. So this cell has to be one of the red cells around the three. That is not the one. The one is here. That's fine. It's disobeying the constraint because it's not a given. The red arch is up here. These are blue. That one is blue, yes. Um, this is blue because the snake can't touch itself. So is this. This is blue because the snake can't just come into that cell and stop. And now we've got a 23 row with three red cells, which have to be 9, 8, and 6. This is red because the snake has to continue. Ah, okay, three rows coloured. Ah, okay, yes, this, now the geometry of the grid is quite interesting, this T-shape in particular. Yes, the, the top up here has to be two, four, five, and seven. So, the tail has to be three, six, eight, and nine. The, sorry, the tail of the T, not of the snake. Two, four, five, and seven. Two must be in one of those. Two, four, five, and seven. Ah, oh, and this three is blue, and so, so that's a red cell. So the snake has turned there. This is a blue one, obviously. So the snake either goes here and then carries on past the next cell to there. I think that might be a problem. Ah, oh, this is a given one. Sorry, that's got its one red already. So that's blue, right. So the snake can't go into there, it would end. It must come down here. That's the one red for this one. The other two are blue. Snake carries on down here. Does it go into this? If this was red, its blue would be there, this would be red. If this was blue, its red would be there, this would be blue. Oh, so those two cells are the same, but I don't know if they're on the snake. Well, I do know if they're on the snake because of this 34. Those three cells aren't enough. So the snake has to come into column nine again. And to do that, it has to occupy three cells in column nine, just like up here. Every time it comes in, it has to take three cells at least, maybe four, before going out. So, these two have to be red. They have to be part of three or four. And I think I just worked out that these two are the same because of the one. This can't be blue, yes, because it would have two reds. So that is red with one blue. Okay, so that's blue. And we've got the snake's tail coming all the way around here. I don't know if it goes to the bottom because the 11 that's not in the 34 could be two or three cells. Wow. Three, two. Okay, keep focusing. I don't know what to be looking at really now because I've kind of run out of steam there a bit. Ah, oh, this... Th no, we've looked at that. I don't... Oh, hang on, yes. This can't be red now, because how are you can... How, how would we get that red in now that it can't get out? I don't think it could. No, this can't be red, or that one would get isolated, because there's no room to loop around there without touching itself. So that's blue. This is the red one, so that carries on to there. Now that becomes blue... 
oh, I was going to make that blue, but actually this could loop round still and come out like that. Two, I think we've established twos are no good on the snake. Ah, oh, but this two is not on the snake. That is saying there are two reds around it. This can't be a red because the snake would, I keep wanting to say die there, but end there would be the slightly polite way. This is red. And now we've got the same thing in column one where those three cells aren't enough to be the 27. So we need at least three more cells. In fact, only three more cells in this column because the outies, as it were, make 18 and that can't be just two. So one of these is blue and one is red. And we've got a 34 clue in column two. That's going to need at least five cells. It can't have all six because that snake would be impossible. It would disobey the constraints. So one of these two is blue and one is red. This is red at the bottom. Oh, I don't know if... Yeah, okay. So one of those two is red, one's blue. One of those two is red, one's blue. This has to be red because however it gets here, it has to continue. It's not much help in a 19 column, I don't think. Ah, this 33 clue though, does it act like the 34 and 27? It's gonna to have to have two runs of snake in it. Um, maybe not, it could all be one. I was going to say that the 33 row a couple above means that something like that's not possible because you could never get enough cells into the 33 row. But I'd forgotten this loop round that, that does look possible. Oh, actually, look at the numbers. Maybe that loop round isn't. The minimum of these three is six, eight, and three. That's 17. Oh, and a two there. Ah, that'll do it. Maybe that does do it. No, that's not right, because this was all based on if something could come. Yes, if that was to loop round there, rather than just complete in that cell, this part of the snake, then it's, the snake's also going to have to come out here. Now this isn't possible. 368 is a minimum of 17, plus two more cells is going to break 19, especially as they can't be one. Brilliant. Okay, so that is not right. That is the way the snake gets around the corner. That is now blue. These two cells add up to 13, but there are three ways of doing that. Either way around. These five add up to 23, which uh, is a fairly middling total. Um, this is blue though. These are blue because the snake would be touching itself otherwise. What about 34? No, what about 19? That's got to be three cells. So at least two of these are snake. Can't be just those two. So that is a snake cell. Um, which is a weird way of getting there. Actually, exactly the same applies in column seven. You've got one snake cell. 24, yes, you can do it in three cells. But at least two of these are a snake. So that one's a snake. This one can't be because it would end there. Nearly said die again. Okay, um, so, I mean, I know the general path of the snake. I think it might have to go up into these three. Because otherwise, how are you going to get enough for the 33? No way. Yeah, it's got to go up into those three. Definitely. In fact, is five enough? No, because there's a two in it. That has to be red to do the 33. So now that's blue. This must be red to get the snake around the corner. That's blue. Uh, it could join up in three different ways there. 
this is blue, this has to be blue, but it could join up in two different ways there. Okay, but what else do we know? That could be 9875 to go, no it couldn't, there's got to be at least one down there, that's useless. 13, those two make 11, such a middling total, so irritating. 34, nah, I can't use those anymore, I've used everything down here. Ah, I'm going to have to do the rest some other way. I just don't think. I mean, I know from that 27 clue that all of those can't be read, but I don't think that's very helpful. Let's have a look at the numbers. I barely looked at the numbers in this puzzle at all. Now, oh look, we've got five of the first six rows of ones. So the other one has to be in one of these two cells because that shape hasn't got a one yet and it doesn't reach below. The one in this shape has to be in one of those. Ah, this shape. Yeah, it has to be in one of those. So those are the three... No, there's another one. Ah, down here. Yeah. Yeah, that's got to be right. We've, we've already used, in column one, for instance, we've already used up all the possible one positions by ones in the shape or row, and then the other two must be consumed in the pencil markings there works the same for the columns. Yeah, that's a one. Oh, yeah, that's beautiful for us um, in terms of determining the snake because if the snake was there and therefore didn't touch these cells at the bottom here, it would only have a maximum of five cells, which was okay before, but now they include a one. So now they max out at 31. And that's not possible. So these three are snake. Ha! Now, it doesn't help me finish those two. Oh, I don't know. This one must be blue because we need at least two blue cells to make up the 12. Um, so this is red. And I'm still left with one ambiguity. Oh, what about the negative constraint? If this was, oh no, it's useless, it can't doesn't determine anything. I'm, oh, I mean, yeah, that's surrounded by three. I have such trouble working with these constraints. I hope I don't have to use the negative constraint. Right, we've done ones. I'm going to leave that unresolved. I don't think these clues are enough to determine which way around the snake goes yet. What about twos? Oh, two in the first column. Bam, that's easy. Can't be anywhere there because of the shape or those two because of twos. So I can fill in a two there. And it's quite good to see it doesn't obey the constraint, so it's not a given. That, that makes sense. Now that means that two in the central column can't be in those two cells. So it's got to be there. Uh, now we've got two in the final three. Oh, that takes two out of there. In the T shape, it's got to be here. And two more columns of two. We haven't got a two into this shape. And all of those cells are taken, so we can put it in there. And where does it go in column eight? I want to put it there, but there's already a two in the shape. This shape hasn't got one. What's going on there? Let's just undo what I was just doing. Two in the first row, in the first column. It has to be here if that one's correct, and I think that is. It has to be there. That's used up all the twos in this shape. Now, was I right to make this three, six, eight, nine? Maybe that could be two. 
No, 6, 8, 9 was right for the 23 sum. So 3, so 2 is in one of those positions. Ah, oh, so this can be 2. So why was I trying to put a 2 up there? Right, that's nearly gone badly wrong there, because it wasn't working with the 2 up there. So let's just prove why. I mean, exactly what we said. If there was a 2 there, the 2 in this shape would be here. There'd be a 2 here, and there'd be nowhere to put a 2 in down here. So in fact, 2 in the middle column is there. Whew. Okay, save myself from a fate worse than death. Now, two in this shape. Actually, that's the much easier way to go about it. Two in this shape has to be here because of these three twos. That forces the two up into one of these positions. Um, actually, yes, look, negative constraint. I can finally use it. That cannot be a two because it would have been a given two because it sees two reds. So that is the two. Ha! I have mastered this rule, and the last two goes in there. Yes. In fact, the, yeah, the simpler way of doing those twos would be to spot that that two goes there in this shape. That puts a two somewhere up here and stops that being a two. So that gives us the two for column five. Okay, can't always do this the simple way, it turns out. Now, has this helped with the ones? No, that would does not have any negative constraint relevance. No, don't think so at all. Right, threes then. Threes are about the only other number that could ever really be a marked number. I don't think we're going to use that particularly, probably. Threes are one of those cells, because again, it's been used in this shape. Um, can't be in any of those because it's been used in their shapes must be up here somewhere um, don't think any of those have the negative constraints no oh that's interesting look at this row where's three going to go here in that has been used in this shape. This one stops it being there. Those are stopped by that one. And this one by the threes we just marked in at the top. So th three in the T is actually there. We get a six, eight, nine triple here. I could actually have done that, I think, by some form of grid geometry. Like if you draw an imaginary line across the grid after row five, these two are poking out. And by the rules of Sudoku, where the top five rows have to have all the digits from one to nine, those have to be the same as these three cells. Actually, that's quite useful now. Let's put in six, eight, nine there, because whatever's in these two cells has to be in those two cells. Um, so we've got quite a few cells I can mark as four, five, or seven in the various rows and columns. Um, so I still haven't finished the snake. Now I was on threes. The three at the top is somewhere there. Oh, but columns were, might have been easier. Yes, three there and three there. So three here is in one of these cells. Actually, hang on. I don't think it can be here because of the negative constraint. That would have had to be a blue three. So it can't be there. Because it sees three, three red cells around it. Exactly. Now, it's a bit less determinate over this side. Three could be in any of those cells and anywhere in this shape. Oh, hang on, those threes rule out all of those for the shape. So three is actually tucked into one of these two, um, which rules out those two. But it's very, there's still quite a lot of three possibilities in this. Well, actually, that's, oh no, they're, they're in the same column. I was going to say the negative constraint helps, but I think I've used that plenty already, certainly compared to what I was expecting. Right, so we're going to have to use the numbers. That is literally, surely, the only way to progress now. Um, 
So let's take it methodically. 20 here. Well, that means the out the outies, the blue cells, are 25. Oh, so these three have to add up to 22. They can't include a three. No way. Get rid of the three there. I can fill in the three. Well, I've given up working on the threes, and suddenly I can place one again and another. <laughs> And um, that three means none of those are three, so three is confined in the final column to those two cells. Uh, okay, so we end up with a pattern like that that I cannot resolve yet. But that's nice. Okay, so these three add up to 20, so they include a nine. That, no, they add up to 22, They're, so they include a nine. 976 or 985. I'm not going to pencil mark that. No. Um, this row we've kind of done already. We know that the blues add up to four. This row we've done as well. Now this one, the blue cells add up to 22. Oh, okay, brilliant. So they're nine and eight, the other ones. That's handy. Um, the others come from one, four, five, six, seven. That is, in fact, the total that makes 23. Just checking that in my head, and it does. 13 here, and in fact, what we've marked is the three possibilities for 13. Um, 23 here, oh, three already. Again, 20, no, not again. 20 from the three red cells could be 875, but can't include a 3? No, could be 983. Oh, nearly slapped a 3 in there, which could really have bitten me. Uh, 33 here, so the blue cells add up to 12. They include a 1. Hmm, but that just leaves 11 for 2, which is not a simple ask. 27. Oh, how about this 33 in the... No, no, let's study the 27 without giving up on it. The blues have to add up to 18. No, I think that's too uncertain. The bottom... 33, including 1, 3 and 2. The remaining reds have to add to 27. So this has to be red. Otherwise, they can't possibly get there. Let me just check that. 9, 8, and 7, 24, and 1, 2, and 3, 30. Yes, that's red. So we have finally determined the snake. These two add up to 12, so this could be 8, 7, or 5. The 27 now, I don't think it's that useful still. Such a middling number. In fact, the average of those four is about six, yeah. Right, 27 down the first column. So these three add up to 18. Uh, can this be a three? These would have to add up to 15. Yes, 873. So the absolute yeah, this is between 3 and 6. I'm going to mark that in. Um, oh, th oh, good God, 34. So the blues add up to 11, and that is a given 5. I should have seen that a long time ago, I imagine. Right, 19 here. Three, four cells, including 2. That's difficult. 34 here, so these two add up to 11, so that is not a 1. Which hasn't resolved the 1s, but still, they add up to 11, so that is 7, 6, or 4 to go with that. Here, oh, 19. Um, the minimum is 15, the maximum is 21. Seven, nine, five is the maximum. So I don't think this can be six, for instance, because 
Yeah, 18 would be the maximum. That is either 9 or 8. In which case, these add up to either 10, which is not possible, or 11, which is. So they are 7 and 4. This is 8. Uh, use the right mode. There we go. 7, 4 pair means that's a 5. These are 8. Um, one of these has to be 8. Yes, we know that from that. Okay, 13 here. Oh my god, simple red cell fill in. That's an 8 because we already had 3 and 2. 24 here. Those three add up to 21. But that could be 8, 7, 6 with an 8 here. 9, 8, 4 with an 8 here. Or 9, 7, 5. So don't know. Ah, 32. So the blues add up to 13. We've got 5. We know there's a 1 in there. That's 1 and 7. Oh, that does nothing else, but still. And here, in the final column, they add up to 11. So that could be 4, 5, or 6 to go with that one. How about grid geometry? We had a look at that cutoff at the end of row 5. Yeah, what about down here? At the end of column 4, those two have to be the same as those two. Which means... Actually, the other way around, those two have to be the same as those two if you cut it off at the end of column 5. So that's not a 5. Both of those mean that. One of those is a 5. This isn't a 5 because it's got a 5 next to it. Oh, in fact, this they have to add up to 12. Right, so I should have noticed that when I filled in the 5. So that's a 7. This can't be an 8. It's a 9. This is 6. My goodness, there's suddenly numbers being given. Sorry, you've probably seen some of these a while ago and been shouting at me to fill them in. And I'm doing it now. 9, 6, 1, 8 there. So, 2, 3, 8, 1, 7. No, that's not a helpful column. Right, this column's now got uh, 5 and 4 to go in there. Ah, and this shape, 6, 1, 8, 5, 4, 2, 3, 7, 9 there. Now, I have to keep remembering the shapes as well as everything else. These three are 6, 5, and 4 for the column. 8, 9, 2, 3. That's 4, 5, 6, or 7 for the shape. Uh, no, no. What should I be looking at now? 2, 3, 1. Ah, these four have to be the same as these four. 2, 3, 1, and that has to be... I oh know I was going to write 4, 5, or 6, but that could be the 3 and it could be something else, so that's not that helpful. Those two add up to 11, I know that. Keep doing the same sums again and again. Right, these three add up to 21. Could still be 8, 7, 6. Oh, these three because of column 9, have to be the same as these. 3, 2, and unknown. Okay, not that helpful. 2, 3... Have I finished all my 3s? No, I still haven't. Right, I must. there must be some sum that's become easier now, and I'm not spotting it yet. If this was a 4, those 2 would be 13. If it was a 7, no, that's 2. Flexible. Ah, 9 in this row. It's not a sum, but it's useful. Right, these two now add up to 10, which makes them either 7, 3, or 4, 6. And that can't be a 6, so they are done. Right, that has sorted out the 3s. Yes, I will take it. Let's get rid of the pencil marks. Um, this isn't an 8 anymore. That column's done. This column's done. This one is nothing like done, the 19 column. Right, but look, 5 is now looking at that 4. Sorry, some of these are, you know, it's just hard to look at everything scanning all the time. You've got shapes, sums, as well as just numbers looking across the grid at each other. Um, these are from 6, 8, and 9. 
Ah, oh, that one has sorted out the ones. Yes, that's something I wanted to be doing for ages. Um, right, now we've got three blues that have to add up to 12, so that's a four. Relief to know that it's all still working. That's a five because the seven's done. Makes that a four. These two had to add up to 11. Hopefully that was just a case of me wrong pencil marking the top right. Please. Yeah, it works with that. What have we got in this now? Seven and another 13. Can't be seven, six or four, nine. That must be five, eight. That does still work. Eight, right. Six and nine to go in those blue cells. Um, where else now? It's a very scary moment. Anyway, this can't be five and this can't be five. So in the row, five is here. These are six, nine in some order. Gives six, nine pair in the column. That's four, which those aren't. Five, seven, three, one, two, four is up here somewhere. But it could be there. Oh no, that's a five. That's the last one in its column. That's a four now, so the four is not there. Uh, six, eight, and nine to go in the box. And this one can't be six. That's a seven, because the five's done. That fixes the four and five. Six and nine into the column. Four and eight down here, can't resolve them, but the shape means that's a nine, there's a six there. Eight and seven we can do in the shape. That's six now. Um, this is a naked single four. Eight and four, nine there. Eight over here, it looks like it's working at the moment. Just one weird pencil mark having thrown me out so far, and I think we're getting there now. Six, nine pair in this column, so this is seven. Um, and now the shapes surely do everything else, don't they? No, not quite. Um, but this one, yeah, this is a nine by the shape. That makes this a six, that does help. That makes this a six in the column. Nine there. We've got five and seven to put, no, five and nine to put in here. So the five is there, nine, five, six, seven, and just the snake's tail to finish off with, I think. Six there, hit the check button. Okay, the Sudoku's all good. Let's hope that the uh, sums are all right. I mean, they have been for everyone I've checked. Um, what a puzzle. I mean, that is brilliant. That is just like a triple or quadruple whammy that is tough stuff well done if you got through that in the last week from the community page and well done if you tried it today from the link um, it's a brilliant puzzle thanks very much to uh, jeremy aka quarter through and uh, to the discord guys for for recommending it and yeah i'm certainly not bitter about having had to solve that because i enjoyed every moment frankly so thank you very much for watching and uh, Hope to see you again soon. Now, now for this cricket match. See you later. Bye.